Joining us now on the course side seats, the head coach of the men's national team, John Herdman. The CONCACAF Nations League, it's the beginning of the road to Qatar 22. Uh, what are your expectations for this uh, World Cup qualifier? We're in World Cup qualifying now, John. Well, it is. I mean, the Nations League has made sure that every single game we play now, right up until the World Cup, is meaningful. So I think for us being back in Canada and playing a meaningful match. The fans haven't had that for a while. So it gives people in Toronto, Ontario, a chance to come and be part of the journey. And this is the first time we've played in Canada on this new journey. So for many people, they can be part of the start of something great. That's, that's where I'm hoping this is going to be. Two weeks ago, you got some big news. 19-year-old phenom, Balu Tabla. He was born in the Ivory Coast, but moved to Canada as a kid, has committed to play for Canada. How big is this? Yeah, it's massive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think for many a year, people were always concerned and we had the Owen Hargreaves sing syndrome, you know, like another one leaves Canada, another one. But, you know, Balu, everyone thought he wasn't going to come back. He was influenced by his idol, Didier Drogba, when he was in Montreal. And I think we thought we'd lost him, but he's back. And I think, again, what it's doing is just sending messages around the world. We've got a kid from Barcelona. We've got a kid from Bayern Munich. We've got a kid from Liverpool. We've got a kid from Juventus, a kid from Olympic Lyon. And I think it's sending these messages to every young player in the country that, you know, there's another standard out there. We can, we can actually push. We've got to find a way to these clubs because Canadians are. Um, you mentioned Bayern Munich. That kid is Alfonso Davies, uh, currently with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Zlatan Ibrahimovic on Thursday said... He must be good if he's going to Bayern Munich. That, that's yeah, a, that's yeah. pretty high praise. Yeah. And he also said he needs to not be intimidated by those great players. Have you talked to him about this, this journey he's about to make over to Europe? This is a huge thing for Alfonso Davies. It is a huge thing. I think even just coming into the men's national team camp's a big thing for Alfonso. He's 17. We, mm -hmm. we just keep forgetting that. He's a 17-year-old. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't gone there with those conversations. I think it's... When he comes into camp, I want him just to focus on enjoying that shirt, that experience representing your country, and not to bring that other clutter, which is good clutter, into, into his space. But, you know, I think what Zlatan's trying to say is, is that many players go to those environments and just don't cut it. But what I've seen with Alfonso is he just plays with a smile. And there's a passion there. There's just an energy when he plays. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's unique, because obviously you see a lot of players survive and make it at those levels. But if there's one player that's going to do it, uh, I've got a lot of faith in that young man. Has Canadian soccer ever seen a youth movement like we're seeing right now? Well, I'm pretty new to it all. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> I think that's, that's what's different for me. It's like, you know, on the women's side, we did exactly the same. We put our trust and faith in young players. And... You know, you've got to get that balance between senior veterans and, and young players. And I think when you get that balance right, something special happens. There's a chemistry in the group that you get the wisdom and, and some of the long in the toothness, which is important. And then you get the just complete naiveness and, and energy. And when that comes together, you're starting to see, like, the lads went out there and albeit... We beat the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's U.S. Virgin Islands. But they, they made history. And, and that was a big part of what this group are trying to, to do with the mindset. One thing that a Canadian national team men's coach has always had to deal with is actually getting the players together in one spot consistently. Uh, is this something you think about, the, the geographical obstacles that are in your way? Yeah, there's challenges for sure. But I think there's a new deep, motivation for this group so we've we've presented a vision a very clear vision that it, from what i'm seeing the players are buying into but more importantly they see the talent in the group they, they can see that there's a genuine chance now and every camp we have we we do things a little bit different we add something new we add something in the culture we add something tactically and i think the players don't want to miss out they know that this game, then the next, then the next. It's just building blocks to where we've got to get to, which is a team that will and can compete in 2022. I'm not looking at the team that's going to qualify here. You have to see the end in mind. We, we want to be that team that everyone remembers in 2022, not the team 
that just qualified for a World Cup. So, you know, when you're able to map out those steps to the players and how we're going to evolve, they know they can't miss camps. It's, it's critical. And you've built a team before. The Canadian women's program, such a rabid following. You, you see videos of kids meeting Christine Sinclair for the first time, and the men's program has never had that aura to it. Do you see that happening in the near future? I think we have to earn it. Right. You know, the women's team, we won a bronze medal. You know, that, you know first bronze medal in 80-odd mm -hmm. years. You know, then we go back and repeat and do it the first thing in 100 years. They earned that. And I think as a men's team, we have to earn that as well. It's the performances that we put out in Dominica, in the game, in BMO Field next week. And, and being courageous to, to go and raise the bar in those games as well, not just to go and get the result, to go and inspire those, those people to want to come back and be part of this yeah, journey. Like, like anything, if you win, people will come. They will. They will. And I think that's, that's what this men's team have to do. We have to earn that right. We mentioned Davies, and we mentioned some other names. Are there, is there someone else that maybe the average Canadian soccer fan doesn't know about that you're really excited about, maybe a young player that you want Canadians to know about uh, going forward as we try to qualify for Qatar in 2022? Well, I think there's a lot. There's a lot of... I mean, you, you can't not talk about people like Sami Piet and Jonathan Azario. They're still young players. Lucas Cavallini, 26, 23. You know, we've got an in-between a group there that are really at the core of our team. They're, they're, they're the, the backbone of what's going to take us into the future. But some of the young players, you know, Derek Cornelius, he, he doesn't get much of a mention because he's a centre-back and he's not dribbling on the wings. But he's a 20-year-old that went out to USVI in 98% pass completion and, you know, really doing a great job for Canada on that left-hand side, naturally left-footed. So. You know, I think we've got some players that will always be in the, in the shadows because now you've got a kid at Bayern Munich and a one at Barcelona. But, you know, people like Sami Piet, you know, the centre midfield is... He does a great job for the team and he's the warrior that never really gets the mention. So, just, I think you've got to watch the whole squad. There's talent everywhere. It's bubbling at the minute. Uh, before we let you go, put you on the spot. Best soccer player in the world right now. In your oh, mind, in your mind. My goodness me. I love Modric in the, in the World Cup. Yep. I mean, he was, he was bloody outstanding. I mean, to go three extra times, three extra times, and then to still perform the way he did, there's, there's something special about that. So for me, it's, it's, it's him at the minute. Uh, Can't go wrong with that. Him. And FIFA agrees with you, <laughs> yes. obviously. Well, uh, yeah. I'm sort of agreeing <laughs> with FIFA as well. Like. <laughs> Then I can't go wrong, can I? No. Yeah. Uh, John Herdman, thank you so much. Best of luck as you guys continue to uh, take this journey to qualifying for Qatar and then uh, the North American uh, Mexican World Cup beyond that. It's going to be incredible. It will be. It will be. And make sure you come out and watch us Tuesday night, Dominica, Beemore Field. Come and watch us. Come on.